Hello there and welcome to part two of unit 12 in a short series on um, the topic of applied dominance and modulation. This is to supplement um, the unit 12 in the Celebrate Theory Level 9 book um, published through the Royal Conservatory of Music. Now where we left off, we were looking at tonicization and how we can actually have a five of any chord. Traditionally, the most common um, pattern when, create, when thinking about tonicization is to decorate the dominant note, or what is known as five of five. So if we're in, in any key, we can actually create the five of, do, of the dominant. So let's say we are in uh, the key of G major. The, the first note of that scale, of course, is G. And if we count up five notes from G, we land on D. Now, if we think just in a short term about how D can be the first note, and we think of the fifth note of the D major scale, then we land on A. Now, if we think of the dominant seventh of the key of D major, A, C sharp, E, and G are the notes that are found. Now, in the key of G major, of course, this chord, A7, A, C sharp, E, G, does not fit um, diatonically, which is, means it's, the notes are not all completely in that key. But if we add the C sharp and we attach the dominant seventh, A7, going to D, we can actually decorate the dominant chord of G major by going to the fifth of the, of the dominant first, also known as five of five, going to five, going to one. Now, this can be created on any note. We can do this on, um, the, th uh, on the five chord, the four chord, the two chord, the three chord, any chord can be used. So in a major key, we can have the um, we can have a lot of different chords that are decorated, um, except for two in a minor key. Because in a minor key, the two chord is diminished. Um, but if you choose to use the two chord, what you want to do in a minor key is make sure to use the two chord as a minor chord, which means that we raise one of the notes. That can be something we can speak on in a different topic. For today, um, speaking about the uh, secondary dominance and also speaking about how um, they are used to color thing, used to color a, a, a piece is the purpose. You can hear how we can have as well a lot of different ch color changes when using inversions. So just like we have with the dominant seventh chord, we can have root position, first inversion, second inversion, and third inversion. You can do the same inversions and the same, in same rules apply when um, uh, resolving the notes. So the third of the dominant seventh chord always rises, and the seventh traditionally falls to the best of our ability, at least in each musical context. But we can use inversions and use that in the five of five progression. Something that's very interesting that's very, and also very important is whenever we use a, do, a secondary dominant in, a, in any key and we use an applied dominant, in other words, you want to make sure to put the correct accidentals into the chord that you're using as the secondary dominant because the secondary dominant technically is not part of the original key. So let's say we're in the key of B flat major and we want to have the secondary dominant on five. So we want to have a five of five in the key of B flat. Counting up five notes from B flat, we get to F. And then we think of the F major truss scale. And we want to go up five notes. Then we get to C. So the five of five, the five of F is C, E natural, G, and B flat. In order to successfully write that, when we change keys, we want to make sure to include the E natural in the specific chord so that you can then see how the um, resolution can still be in the correct key. 
something that's neat when we play this. Five of five, five, seven, one. So C7 going to F7 going to one. It just sounds really different and interesting. And it was very invigorating for composers to use this uh, technique. Now, something else that we can speak on is how um, when using inversions um, and then going to uh, a five of five, the resolution of, especially of the third and the seventh and the secondary dominant chord, and also if you choose to go to the dominant chord right afterwards, the resolution of both chords is the same. We want to think about the third and the seventh of the secondary dominant chord and the dominant chord and make sure that the voices are um, resolved correctly. So I do hope that this uh, tutorial is helpful and gives a little bit of insight. I look forward to seeing you next time for another tutorial very soon. And until then, take care for now.